I gave my cheating wife a surprise box during her meeting WAP. She screamed in hysterics. But before we start, a disclaimer. Let's be clear. We're sharing this tale not for a dramatic plot twist, but as a what not to do guide. So buckle up. You critically dodge the shady characters and aim for a life that's more pizza, less heartburn. Remember, choose your faith wisely. I'm Luciano Rossetti, and I've been married to Lily for 15 years. We're the proud parents of two preteen daughters who still have a lot of love for their daddy. I consider myself an alpha male, someone who stands up for himself and doesn't tolerate any nonsense. But I also treat my wife with the utmost care because I know she's a special treasure in our relationship. I support her taking charge and feeling empowered up to a certain point. My genetic inheritance from my dad has left me standing tall at six feet, six inches, weighing 265 pounds of muscle. I have a commanding presence, but in reality, I'm a gentle giant, unless provoked. Lily has witnessed this side of me a few times when we've been out and she's been approached by some tough characters. Lily is a head turner with ample curves, long, attractive legs, a slim waist, and a lovely face. Guys can't help but stare and flirt with her, which understandably gets under my skin. One of my shortcomings is my tendency toward jealousy, and once it flares up, it's not easy to control. I've worked on taming my anger over the years, but I haven't fully mastered it yet. Moving on. Lily has seen my jealous outburst twice in our 15 years together, and she's well aware of what I'm capable of. On two separate occasions while we were out, some obnoxious guys persisted in trying to get her to dance after she had already declined, explaining she was with me. Both times they brushed aside her refusal and forcibly pulled her out of her seat right in front of me. I guess they assumed that since they were tough looking guys, I would just sit there and allow them to take my wife. They made a colossal mistake session about our daughters and having a good time. I was taken aback when this guy had the audacity to grab her hand and pull her out of the seating area without a moment's delay. I left my seat and positioned myself between him and my wife before he even set foot on the dance floor. In a swift move, I dislocated his shoulder and guided him back into our booth where he writhed in pain. Lily and I then swiftly left the scene. Like I mentioned, I don't tolerate disrespect from anyone, and my main challenge is dealing with jealousy. This situation raises a question. Since she knows my nature, why would she allow this to happen? Update court on date night. Even with my suspicions, my feelings for her hadn't wavered. Several unusual things were unfolding that hadn't been present during our 15 years of marriage, triggering my intuition. Her outfits and appearance underwent significant changes when the new boss took over at the office. Our intimate life suddenly took a positive turn with her now taking the initiative, a behavior she hadn't exhibited before. There was a surge in late night text messages and more frequent late work meetings. Naturally, she had plausible explanations for everything, but my innate jealousy wasn't put at ease. For some reason, I instructed the PI firm not to share any information with me on they had completed their investigation. I hoped that I was just being an overly suspicious husband, and I didn't want things to change between us. After three months of investigation, I received a folder containing the news I had been dreading. I reviewed the video, audio, and photos, and then I informed my attorney, Mac, to proceed with the divorce papers and have them ready for me by Wednesday afternoon. My plan was to surprise them on their Thursday night date. While they believed I was out of town, I had something special in mind for the couple. It still surprised me how she could have thought she'd get away with this. Lily knows me better than anyone. She's aware of my intuition, determination, and how unforgiving I can be. She's witnessed my ruthlessness when I took over the company and decisively dealt with competitors. I now have controlling interest in a sizable trucking company. I've earned respect from truckers and teamsters treating them fairly and I know they would support me if I ever needed them. I've given Lily everything and always treated her exceptionally well as if she were royalty, and she's fully aware of it. She praises me to her friends and family, sharing how wonderful I am and how I shower her with care, which she loves. Despite all this, a question keeps echoing in my mind, especially during these last few hours. Why? Why would she risk everything she has for a fleeting affair? Why would she jeopardize our relationship for a fling with her boss? Why indeed? This is the most troubling question for me. Lily had always excelled as both a devoted mother and a loving wife, which is why this situation was particularly difficult to grasp. Our intimate life was active and fulfilling, though evidently not fulfilling enough. She managed the household responsibilities while also holding a full-time position as an executive assistant at a local tech company. It's something I never would have imagined that she would engage in an extramarital affair. Update one date night. Thursday, I had everything organized. One of my contacts who helps me out would be with me to hand over the folder when the time was right. I arrived early and tipped the hostess generously requesting a more private table for them. 
my clever wife was under the impression that I was away on a trip. On the audio recording, I overheard her telling her boss that she was available Thursday night if he still wanted to meet up. Naturally, this guy eagerly agreed and offered to plan everything. The private investigator agency equipped me with software to install on Lily's phone, allowing me to obtain copies of her text messages and emails. This software also feeds an audio recording function that could upload the recordings to a private server on a Monday. I received a copy of the text he had sent to Lily, which detailed the time he'd pick her up the restaurant for their reservations and the directive for her to dress provocatively for him. I was seething with anger after reading this and realizing how my soon-to-be ex-wife was behaving, not to mention the audacity of this guy to pick her up at our home. My plan was relatively straightforward. I would wait for the lovers to settle in with their initial drink. Then I would appear suddenly. That's when my performance would start, culminating in a subtle threat and the unexpected presentation of the divorce papers. My anger and thirst for revenge were growing stronger in my heart. I knew Lily wouldn't desire a divorce because she truly loved me and our children. However, I was fully aware that what I was about to do would devastate her and alter her life forever. But at that moment, I didn't care. All I wanted was for her to experience some of the pain she had inflicted on me. Some might argue for forgiveness and letting go, especially for the sake of the children in our 15-year marriage. But did I mention that I'm a somewhat immature, jealous alpha male? There was no way I was going to tolerate another man being with my wife, only to keep her as my devoted partner. As much as I loved her, and as much as it hurt, I knew I could never view or touch her in the same way again. I had both surveillance and support on standby, ready to inform me at the right moment. So on Thursday night, I received the signal that the couple was seated and had their drinks. I was prepared to confront them directly. Leaving my car, I entered the restaurant and exchanged a smile with the hostess, taking a deep breath. I locked away my anger and proceeded with my plan. The couple was seated at their table, and it was painful to see my beautiful wife wearing a provocative cocktail dress, highlighting her ample cleavage. This really angered me, especially because she had never dressed that way for me. I was puzzled and frustrated by this behavior. Why would she do this to me? It made no sense and was driving me crazy. It seemed she wanted to look appealing to her boyfriend for the night, which only fueled my anger. Approaching them from an angle, I moved to their table without them noticing as they were absorbed in each other romantically. Quite a sweet scene. Only when I pulled a chair from a nearby table did they become aware of my presence. The look on Lily's face was indescribable. A mix of surprise, fear, and guilt that I'd never seen before. Her date remained clueless about the situation and didn't realize I was her husband. He simply stared at me with an annoyed expression. And so it began. Hey Lily, enjoying your date night? I asked, flashing a big smile. Hey there, what brings you here? I thought you were away tonight. My boss, Jeremy, asked me to have dinner to discuss some organizational changes. Why don't you join us? Jeremy, this is my husband, Luciano, she said in a calm, affectionate tone. She was really smooth. I had to give it to her. She was composed and quick on her feet. The drink I'd ordered before approaching the table arrived, and after brushing off Lily's lies, I raised a toast. Without addressing her question, I offered a friendly smile and said, let's raise our glasses for a little toast. Here's to an interesting night and new directions. After my toast, I turned to her boss with a smile. Jeremy, do you know what's kept Lily and me happily married for 15 years? Honesty and trust, plain and simple. Are you married? Jeremy, I already had all the information about him from the report. Yes, I've been married for 20 years and I have four amazing kids ranging from five to 13 years old. I agree with you, Luciano. Trust and honesty are crucial in our marriage too. That's great to hear. Jeremy, Lily, do you share the same sentiment? I asked fully aware that I was putting her in a tight spot. Yes, sweetheart. It's definitely a significant factor in our marriage, she confidently affirmed. After all, she had just mentioned that they were having a business dinner, so there was no reason for her to feel guilty or anxious. You see, Jeremy, our marriage is strong, and Lily knows how much I care for her and how far I'd go for her as long as she remains faithful. I observed them both squirm a bit as I took another sip from my glass. I kept playing the game. So how long have you guys been seeing each other? I asked casually, sporting a big grin. Lily seemed irritated, tried to regain control and sounded defensive. Honey, this is a business meeting and you're making things uncomfortable with my boss. Please don't let your jealousy get the best of you. You know me better than that. Following Lily's lead, her date seized the chance to put me in my place. Indeed. Luciano, this is purely a business dinner. I needed to discuss some upcoming changes. 
and that's why I met with Lily tonight. I apologize if you've misunderstood my friend. I would never cross professional boundaries, especially with a married woman. I attempted to appear apologetic and responded. Oh, I'm sorry. So you're saying you've never taken my wife out on a date, and this is strictly a business dinner? You're right, Luciano. There's absolutely nothing going on between us, he assured me. Lily, is that true? This is purely a business meeting, and there hasn't been anything between you two before. I posed the question that would define our future, truth or deception. I already had a feeling about the answer before she even spoke. Absolutely, darling. It's only business meetings. I would never be involved with another man, especially not my own boss. Please don't act so immature. I apologize. Jeremy, my husband can be a bit jealous, but he knows how much I love him. I lowered my head playing the submissive role and admitted, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I do tend to get a little jealous. I mean, seeing you in that attractive dress out with this handsome man. You can understand why I might feel this way, right? Jeremy gave me a friendly pat on the back, visibly relieved that I seemed fooled and commented, Luciano, no need to apologize. If my wife looked at this stunning and was out with a stranger, well, I'm not sure how I'd react with tensions eased. I signaled the man observing us from the bar. He approached our table, and as he handed me a thick folder, he swiftly departed. Everyone's attention shifted to him, and curious glances were exchanged between Lily and Jeremy. I began to lay out photos from the folder on the table just before placing the first photo down. I turned to Lily and spoke softly in a melancholic tone. Lily, you know I loved you with all my heart and was ready to give you everything. But you've discarded that love along with all the years of our marriage. You've hurt me deeply. And I'll never be able to forget those videos and the hurtful things you said about me on those recordings. Those memories will haunt me for the rest of my life. Thanks for that. I placed down the first 8 by 10 inches photo revealing Lily on her knees with Jeremy. Well, you know, the next picture showed him finishing on her. Her face. And then there were several more showing them in different positions. Lily let out a shocked gasp and covered her mouth with her hands. Jeremy was angry and demanded to know where I got those photos. I simply told him to be quiet. After arranging the photos, I took a moment to examine each one and offer comments. I'd say things like, Lily, you look quite alluring with that in your mouth. And Jeremy, you seem pretty satisfied in this picture. Looks like you're enjoying my wife. Lily was now openly crying and pleading with me to stop. Other diners were starting to look our way, so I tried to keep my voice down to avoid disturbing the whole restaurant. Lily realized how terrible the situation seemed, and she saw only one way out. I'm really sorry, baby. Can we please just leave and talk about what happened? It's not as it seems. I looked at her with a slightly amused expression and asked slowly, not as it seems. Are you going to keep lying to me? You know, being deceitful. But let me stop you right there. Both of you should know that I've got hours, video, audio, text messages, emails, and photos. Lily, I have to admit, after seeing those videos, I never knew that side of you existed, that you could act in such a way. You never revealed that part of yourself to me, and that's painful. I've spent a lot of money in the past three months to gather this information, and it's all legally obtained. So trust me, I understand it all. As I put away the documents, I explained, now let me clarify why I'm here and what's going to happen tonight. I handed Lily the divorce papers and told her, Lily, it's over between us. You and I are finished. Your relationship with your boyfriend has ruined our marriage and my love for you. You've caused me a level of pain I've never felt before, and I won't be with you anymore. You'll sign this tonight, and my colleague at the bar is a notary who will witness your signature. If you don't sign tonight, I'll expose all the videos and audio to your parents. Our friends and your kids will learn about the kind of mother you've been. I've been fair in this divorce, but the girls will stay with me. There's no way my daughters will live with a cheating, disrespectful person like you. Jeremy, my buddy, I'd strongly recommend you get your girlfriend here to sign this before I walk out that door. Otherwise, I'll make sure to hand over all the evidence to your wife and the higher-ups at your workplace. By the time I'm done, your job will be gone, and I'll be persuading your wife, Sarah, to give you the boot and make sure you're financially ruined for a good while. I really don't want to go down that path. So just work on getting her to sign those divorce papers. After that, you can have my soon-to-be ex-wife. I want nothing to do with this woman ever again. My words hit her hard. The idea of losing her daughters was another blow she couldn't bear. Tears streaming down her face and her boyfriend appeared, panicked. Lily pleaded with me to stop and reconsider. She offered the usual lines, the typical excuses. It's not what it looks like. Let me explain. I'll make it right. It was just a mistake. Please forgive me. Blah, blah, blah. She ended by saying, Luciano, I love you and I don't want this. Please give me one more chance. Ignoring her pleas, I got up and announced I'm heading to the restroom. And when I return, those papers better be signed. 
If they're not, I promise you won't even grasp the level of chaos unleashed into your lives. I left Lily in tears and her lover in shock. He knew Jeremy would do whatever it took to get her to sign those papers and save his own skin. During my absence, Jeremy acted swiftly. He understood that he couldn't afford to let his wife and his job see those videos, and he was determined to do whatever it took to avoid that scenario. He needed to persuade Lily to put her signature on the divorce papers, and he spoke up. Lily, just sign them for now, then ask him to hold on to them for a week. That'll give you a chance to talk and convince him of your love. Promise to go to therapy. Do whatever it takes, but make him wait a week. Tell him it's the least he can do after 15 years of marriage for one mistake. It's our best shot right now. I can tell he's serious. And if he has those videos and audio recordings, we're both in trouble. I don't want a divorce. She cried out. Believe me, if you get him to wait, I'm confident you can salvage your marriage. Think about our kids. You wouldn't want to lose them, right? Tears well up again. And after a few moments, Luciano returned to the table. So have you put your signature on those papers yet? With the most sorrowful expression I'd ever witnessed. She locked eyes with me and said, Honey, I'll do whatever you want, including signing these papers. But could you please give me a week before you make any final decisions? Could you let me come back home with you and grant me that time after 15 years together? Can I have one week to be with our daughters and talk? Can you please give me that chance? I remained quiet, gazing into her eyes for a while, contemplating her plea. Ultimately, I relented and responded, despite the fact that you deserve my anger for what you've done and how you've shattered our marriage. For this jerk, I'll grant you that. You can come back home and I'll give you one week before I hand the paperwork over to my lawyer. You'll stay in one of the guest bedrooms. I don't want you near my bed during this time. Now go ahead and sign them so I can get out of here. She put her signature on the papers and I placed them into the folder. I stood up, ready to leave before I walked away. I took her hand in mine and she smiled momentarily until she realized I was taking off her wedding rings. I took them into my pocket and then removed the ring I had worn for our 15-year marriage. I held it up, catching her gaze and nonchalantly tossed it into her glass of wine. The expression on her face gave me a tiny bit of satisfaction when her tears started flowing again. I couldn't help but smile slightly, knowing she was beginning to understand my pain. I turned to Jeremy and said, Well, you jerk. She's all yours now. Do whatever you please with her. I'm leaving. But remember this, Jeremy. You messed around with my wife, destroyed our marriage, and put so much at risk, including my children's perception of their mother. Your fate is in my hands, and I'm holding your future. Don't mess with me. You're lucky I didn't follow through with my original plans for you. This isn't the end between us, you scumbag. You'll be hearing from me soon. Got it? Jeremy nodded quietly as I stood towering over him. It seems I may have thrown a wrench in their evening plans. I wonder if they're still in the mood for their little escapade after I'm gone. As I began to leave, Lily grabbed onto my arm and pleaded, Luciano, can I please come back home with you? I just want to be with you, please. I pulled my arm away as if it had been burned and retorted, screw you. I don't want to be seen with a tramp. You're his plaything. Tonight, I'll see you after he's done using you. Whether it's tonight or tomorrow doesn't matter to me anyway. You have one week, you disgust me, and I'm ashamed to have ever been your husband. All right, yes, I was being a jerk, but honestly, I didn't give a damn. I felt like I had kept my jealousy and anger under control. I was proud that I managed to suppress all that pent up rage. I did give her a week. Let's see what unfolds. Update to the following morning. I heard her return home about an hour later that night, and to her credit, she went straight to the guest room. She must have realized that I wouldn't be in the mood for a calm conversation that night. We crossed paths the next morning in the kitchen as I came down for some coffee, still fueled by a desire for revenge. I kept up my rude attitude and remarked, Good morning. You know what, wife? How's my unfaithful partner doing today? She visibly flinched and lowered her gaze to her coffee, then offered the exact words every cheating wife uses when caught and is desperate to salvage the marriage. Honey, we need to talk. Listen, there's no need to talk about this, Lily. I know what you've been up to. I know how long you've been doing it. I'm aware of all the things you told him about me in our marriage. I witnessed you doing things with him that you never did with me. I saw how you dressed to impress him. I know, he's apparently more impressive. I heard that countless times in those videos. You lied, hid things, cheated, and made me look like a fool. I can't believe you were that foolish. If I'm overlooking something, then we can talk. Otherwise, I've got nothing to say. The fool's me, not you. I don't know why I let it happen. You gave me everything I ever wanted, and I love you. No matter what you heard in those videos, you need to know that hurting you was never my intention, and I never wished for you to find out. 
she managed to say amidst her tears. That's exactly the issue, Lily. You never wanted me to find out. You wanted to keep it hidden and keep lying and sneaking around with your lover behind my back. That's the real issue here, Lily. I can forgive infidelity. We're all human and make mistakes. But this wasn't a mistake. You chose this, and you intended to keep it hidden and continue lying, cheating, and keeping your relationship concealed. I do love you, Lily. But like Tina Turner sings, what's love got to do with it? My trust is shattered, and I'm questioning if I ever truly knew you. How many other men were there? How many times did you sleep with your lover and then come back to our bed with his traces? I'm utterly disgusted. I can barely even talk. I shared my voice heavy with emotion. Now sobbing, she finally grasped the weight of what I was feeling and comprehended the enormity of her actions. She had no justifications or excuses left, only an admission of her wrongdoings. All right, I admit it, and I'm filled with self-disgust. There was no one else involved. And I know no matter what I say, you won't be able to forgive me for what I've done. But I don't want us to get divorced. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to salvage our relationship. I think I need therapy. And maybe we can go together to address what's wrong with me. Please don't abandon me. I paused for a moment before responding. Lily, you can absolutely seek counseling, work on yourself, and I'll stand by your side. But I can't be with a woman who could so easily throw me away. Your actions and words showed me your true feelings. And I can't imagine living with someone who harbors those emotions toward me. I'm aware there are other women out there who would value being with me. You had your opportunity and you let it slip away. Take this week to spend time with the girls and find a way to explain your departure to them. I won't speak ill of you, but you must be honest with them about why you're leaving. In our divorce agreement, I've granted you complete access to the girls whenever you want, but they'll primarily live with me if you continue behaving recklessly and setting a poor example for them. I'll have to make your visits more challenging, understand? I'll treat you better than you might deserve, and I'll help you maintain your relationship with the girls. However, I have two questions I need answers to listen to my questions carefully and contemplate before responding. First, why? Why did you risk everything for this? My second question, was it worth it? I phoned Jeremy the next Monday and arranged to meet him for lunch on Wednesday after he convinced me it was a good idea to meet up. I expressed my frustration to Jeremy about how he wrecked my marriage and how close he became to facing severe consequences. Then I laid out my alternative plan for him over lunch. I talked to him about the impact of his actions on many people due to his involvement with a married woman. I shared my expectations for him to make things right. Part of this involved him covering Lily's rent and car payments for the next three years. I believed he should experience some discomfort for what he did and detailed how this plan would operate. I'll send you the payment details for you to set up automatic transfers. This is your form of punishment. And believe me, you're getting off lightly. Even though I'm done with my cheating wife, I still care for her and want her to be looked after. Since you're the reason for all of this, you will comply with my terms. This arrangement will help Lily get back on her feet after I kick her out. I don't care how you manage it, but if you don't follow through, I'll ensure you lose your job. And your wife, Sarah, learns about your affair. As a bonus, you get to stay alive. This is all because you had to involve yourself with a married woman. Jerks like you need to realize there are consequences for your actions. Instead of wrecking families, why not pursue single women? Your actions were truly despicable. Jeremy, update. I treated Lily decently, allowing her to see the kids and maintain their relationship. But my respect and trust were never fully restored. Jeremy kept up with the monthly payments. Always mindful of my threat, Lily struggled to provide satisfactory explanations for her actions. She admitted that her cheating and dishonesty weren't worth it and regretted her choices. Yet she couldn't pinpoint why she did it. Now she lives alone without a boyfriend and the love she once had. I could have ruined her completely, but losing her family and my love was vengeance enough. Despite her counseling efforts, the why question remained unanswered. The best she could come up with was, I don't know why it just happened. It wasn't about you or our marriage, because I genuinely loved you and was content with our bed life and the life we shared. It was something new and thrilling. I messed up. I couldn't hold back. Lily, if you were content, why did you dress provocatively and wear sexy outfits for him? Why would you do things for him that you never did for me? Maybe if you had put that effort into our relationship, we wouldn't be in this mess. It just happened. Isn't a real answer. You repeatedly engaged in it and dressed to excite him every time. Yet you claim to love me. I hope one day you can give me a genuine explanation. I think we all deserve that much. I watched from the kitchen, balancing a tray of shimmering champagne glasses, the golden liquid bubbling like my hidden excitement. This was our first Christmas party as a married couple, and I wanted it to be perfect. 
Need a hand, love? David's voice, warm and familiar, startled me from my thoughts turning. I smiled at him, just trying not to spoil the festive spirit. I quipped, and he chuckled, his blue eyes sparkling with that mischief I fell in love with as we entered the living room together. The air was thick with laughter, the scent of pine and the warmth of the fireplace. I watched David mingle effortlessly, his charm as bright as the lights twined around the banisters. My heart swelled with pride and love. Little did I know. Amidst the twinkling lights and joyous carols, a shadow was creeping in. Rachel, David's co-worker, arrived late. Her entrance, subtle yet noticeable. She was striking, draped in a red dress that complemented her dark curls. I greeted her with a smile, unaware of the silent exchange of glances between her and David. The evening unfolded like a winter fairy tale with music, laughter, and the clinking of glasses. But as I floated from guest to guest, ensuring everyone was happy, I missed the undercurrents. It wasn't until I stepped into the kitchen to fetch more refreshments that the thread of our perfect evening began to unravel. The air in the living room shifted. Charged with attention, I was oblivious to when I returned. David was no longer by the fireplace. My gaze scanned the room until I found him standing a little too close to Rachel under the mistletoe. Their conversation seemed casual, but there was something in the way he looked at her, a flicker of something unspoken. Before I could process it, the moment passed. David returned to my side, his smile a little too forced, his touch a little too fleeting. The rest of the evening was a blur of songs and smiles, but underneath it all, I felt a chill that wasn't from the winter air. As the night drew to a close and our guests departed, leaving us in the quiet aftermath, David's usual warmth seemed distant, he kissed my forehead, it mumbling something about being tired. I watched him ascend the stairs, feeling an unfamiliar void. That night, as I lay in bed next to the man I loved, the joy of the evening felt like a distant memory. Unbeknownst to me, a secret had nestled itself in the heart of our home, a silent intruder, amidst the echoes of Christmas carols. The morning after the party, the house was silent, the echoes of last night's laughter lingering like ghosts in the frosty air. I made coffee, the aroma filling the kitchen, trying to shake off the unease that had settled over me. David was already up, lost in thought over his laptop. Morning, I said, trying to sound cheerful. He glanced up a distracted smile on his face. Hey, coffee smells good. I poured him a cup, noticing the distance in his eyes. You okay? I asked, trying to bridge the gap that had formed overnight. Yeah, just a lot on my mind with work, he replied, his gaze returning to the screen. I wanted to believe him, but something felt off. As I sipped my coffee, I couldn't help but replay the image of David and Rachel under the mistletoe. It was probably nothing, just my imagination running wild. Yet I couldn't shake the feeling. The day passed in a blur of chores and half-hearted conversations. David was distant, and I was lost in my thoughts. The frost outside mirrored the coldness that seemed to have crept between us. That evening, as we settled in front of the TV, I tried to reignite the warmth we always shared. I snuggled closer to him, seeking his embrace, but he seemed distracted, his responses to my advances polite but lacking passion. Is everything okay between us? I finally asked, unable to bear the silence any longer. He turned to me, his expression guarded. Of course, why wouldn't it be? I wanted to confront him about Rachel, about the lingering glances I had noticed, but I hesitated. Instead, I leaned in my lips, finding his in a tentative kiss. For a moment, he responded, but then he pulled away a frown, creasing his forehead. I'm just tired, Emma. It's been a long week, he murmured, his words like a barrier rising between us. I retreated, feeling rejected and confused. The rest of the evening was spent in awkward silence. The TV's flickering light, the only thing filling the space between us as we went to bed. The chill in the air was more than just the winter night. I lay there staring at the ceiling, wondering what had changed. The doubt was like a slow poison seeping into my thoughts. I remembered the way David's eyes had lingered on Rachel, the way his laughter had seemed more genuine with her. The images haunted me, igniting a flame of jealousy and fear. What if there was something between them? What if our perfect marriage was just a facade? I turned to look at David asleep beside me. His face was peaceful, betraying none of the turmoil that was raging inside me. I wanted to wake him, to confront him, to demand the truth, but fear held me back, fear of what I might discover, Fear of shattering the fragile peace that was left between us as I finally drifted off to sleep. The snow outside continued to fall, covering the world in a blanket of white. But inside, the warmth of our love seemed to be fading, leaving me cold and alone. The following morning, 
dawn clear and cold, the sunlight streaming through the frosted windows like a promise unfulfilled. I found David in the kitchen, his back to me as he made breakfast. The normalcy of the moment felt jarring given the storm of emotions within me. Good morning, I said, my voice tentative. He turned, offering a smile that didn't quite reach his eyes. Morning, I thought I'd make us some pancakes. That's sweet, I replied, trying to read his expression. Was this his way of making amends or merely routine as we ate? The conversation was stilted. The earth, like with unspoken words. I watched him the way he avoided my case, the way his fingers tapped nervously on the table. The David I knew was confident, assured. This version of him was a stranger to me. David, we need to talk, I ventured, setting my fork down. Is there something going on with you and Rachel? He stiffened his eyes, finally meeting mine. Why would you think that? There's a tension between you two. I noticed it last night, I said, my voice firmer than I felt. David sighed, running a hand through his hair. Rachel and I are just friends. Emma, you're imagining things. I wanted to believe him, but doubt lingered like a bitter aftertaste. It didn't seem that way to me. I pressed. He stood up abruptly, his chair scraping against the floor. This is ridiculous. I'm not having this conversation. I watched him leave the room, my heart pounding in my chest. The distance between us was growing, a chasm filled with doubts and unsaid words. Later that day, as I was tidying up, I found David's phone left unattended on the couch. A message flashed on the screen, Rachel's name glaring back at me. I hesitated, torn between respect for his privacy and the gnawing need for the truth. Curiosity won. I picked up the phone, the message opening up to reveal a conversation that was friendly but intimate, peppered with inside jokes and flirtatious undertones. My heart sank. There was something there, something more than just friendship. Confronting him wasn't an option. I couldn't admit to snooping, but as the day wore on, the knowledge of their exchanges weighed heavily on me a suffocating blanket of betrayal and hurt. That night, as we lay in bed, the space between us felt like a vast ocean. I turned towards him, my hand reaching out in a silent plea for connection. He responded, his arm encircling me, but it felt mechanical, devoid of the passion we once shared. I pressed my body against his, seeking the intimacy that had always been our bridge over troubled waters. For a moment, he responded, his touch, igniting a flicker of hope. But then he pulled away, citing exhaustion, leaving me aching and alone in the dark. I lay awake, listening to the rhythm of his breathing, feeling the distance grow. The man I loved, the man I had built a life with, was slipping away from me, and I was powerless to stop it. The doubts and fears swirled in my mind, a tempest of emotions I couldn't control. Was our love strong enough to weather this storm, or was it already too late? As the night deepened, the questions remained unanswered, the shadows in our marriage growing longer and darker. Days passed with the weight of unspoken words hanging between David and me. The frost outside seemed to have seeped into our home, turning it into a cold, unwelcoming place. I missed the warmth we used to share, the easy laughter and the intimate moments that seemed like distant memories now. One evening, as I was pouring myself a glass of wine, David walked into the kitchen. There was a certain hesitancy in his step, a reluctance that was new. Emma, can we talk? He asked, his voice low. I nodded, bracing myself. Yes, we need to. He took a deep breath, his eyes meeting mine. I know things have been off between us. I'm sorry if I've been distant. Work's been stressful. I studied his face, searching for the truth behind his words. Is it just work, David, or is there something else? He hesitated, then sighed. It's just work. You know, you're the only one for me. I wanted to believe him, but the seed of doubt had already been planted. Okay, I said, although my voice betrayed my uncertainty that night, as we lay in bed. The silence was stifling. I turned towards him, my hand tentatively finding his under the covers. His skin was warm, and for a moment, I felt the familiar spark of our connection. David, I whispered, leaning closer to him. My lips found his neck trailing kisses that used to ignite his passion. He responded, his hand caressing my back. But there was a restraint in his touch that was new. I pressed myself against him, my body aching for the intimacy we once shared. For a moment he seemed to give in his kisses, deepening his hands, exploring with a hint of the desire we used to know. But then, as quickly as it had ignited, the flame seemed to die. He pulled away a frown marring his features. I can't. Emma, I'm sorry. The rejection stung like a physical blow. I lay there feeling more alone than ever. The man beside me was a stranger, and I mourned the loss of the husband I once knew. The next day I decided to confront the issue head on. I needed answers, and I couldn't live in this limbo anymore. David, we can't go on like this. 
I said as we sat at the breakfast table. If there's something going on, I need to know. He looked at me, his eyes filled with the turmoil that mirrored my own. There's nothing going on. Emma, I'm just struggling with some things. Like, what? You can talk to me, David. We used to share everything. I pressed my voice cracking with emotion. He reached across the table, taking my hand in his. I know, and I'm sorry. I just need some time to sort things out in my head. I nodded, trying to hide the tears that threatened to spill. Okay, take your time, but we can't go on like this. We need to find our way back to each other. He squeezed my hand a silent promise that he would try. But as we went about our day, the distance remained a chasm that seemed to widen with every passing moment. That evening, as we sat in silence, the realization hit me. Love wasn't enough to bridge the gap between us. We needed more than promises and half-hearted attempts. We needed action, honesty, and a willingness to fight for what we once had. As I lay in bed that night, listening to David's steady breathing, I knew that the road ahead would be difficult. But I was ready to fight for our marriage, for the love that had once been the center of my world. The question was, was David ready to fight to the tension in our home group? Palpable. A thick fog that neither David nor I seemed able to penetrate. Each day felt like a dance around the truth, a ballad of avoidance and unsaid words. The silence was stifling. I turned towards him, my hand tentatively finding his under the covers. His skin was warm and for a moment, I felt the familiar spark of our connection. David, I whispered, leaning closer to him. My lips found his neck trailing kisses that used to ignite his passion. He responded, his hand caressing my back, but there was a restraint in his touch that was new. I pressed myself against him, my body aching for the intimacy we once shared. For a moment he seemed to give in his kisses, deepening his hands, exploring with a hint of the desire we used to know. But then, as quickly as it had ignited, the flame seemed to die. He pulled away a frown marring his features. I can't. Emma, I'm sorry. The rejection stung like a physical blow. I lay there feeling more alone than ever. The man beside me was a stranger, and I mourned the loss of the husband I once knew. The next day I decided to confront the issue head on. I needed answers, and I couldn't live in this limbo anymore. David, we can't go on like this, I said as we sat at the breakfast table. If there's something going on, I need to know. He looked at me, his eyes filled with a turmoil that mirrored my own. There's nothing going on. Emma, I'm just struggling with some things. Like, what? You can talk to me, David. We used to share everything. I pressed my voice cracking with emotion. He reached across the table, taking my hand in his. I know, and I'm sorry. I just need some time to sort things out in my head. I nodded, trying to hide the tears that threatened to spill. Okay, take your time, but we can't go on like this. We need to find our way back to each other. He squeezed my hand a silent promise that he would try. But as we went about our day, the distance remained a chasm that seemed to widen with every passing moment. That evening, as we sat in silence, the realization hit me. Love wasn't enough to bridge the gap between us. We needed more than promises and half-hearted attempts. We needed action, honesty, and a willingness to fight for what we once had. As I lay in bed that night, listening to David's steady breathing, I knew that the road ahead would be difficult, but I was ready to fight for our marriage, for the love that had once been the center of my world. The question was, was David ready to fight to the tension in our home group? Palpable. A realization dawned on me. Love wasn't just about the good times, it was about fighting through the bad. I was ready to fight for us, for the love we once had. But the question remained, was David willing to join the battle, or had he already surrendered? The night passed in a blur of restless thoughts and unsure tears as the first light of dawn crept through the curtains. I knew one thing for certain. I couldn't give up on us, not without a fight. The love we shared was worth every effort, every tear. It was time to face the storm together or apart. Days blurred into one another, each passing moment a reminder of the widening gap between David and me. My heart ached for the love we once shared, now a distant echo in the cold, silent rooms of our home. I longed for his touch, his laughter, the intimate whispers in the dark, all now lost in the sea of uncertainty. One frosty evening, as I sat alone in the living room, the walls seemed to close in on me. I needed answers, clarity, anything to break the cycle of doubt and pain. I made a decision. It was time to confront the situation, head on. I found David in his study, his eyes tired and distant. David, we need to talk. We can't keep going on like this. I said, my voice firm but shaking. He looked up the weight of our unspoken words, heavy in this gaze. I know him. 
I'm sorry. I just don't know how to fix this. I took a deep breath, my heart pounding in my chest. Is there someone else, David? Is it Rachel? For a moment, he hesitated, and in that pause, my heart sank. No, there's no one else. It's just me. I'm struggling with things I can't explain. His words were a knife to my heart. Then let me in. Let me help you. We used to be a team, remember? He stood up, pacing the room, a caged animal in his own home. It's not that simple, Emma. I feel like I'm losing myself, and I don't want to drag you down with me. Frustration and desperation gripped me. I stepped closer, reaching up to touch his arm. You're not dragging me down. I want to be here for you, but you have to let me in for a brief moment. As our eyes locked, I saw a flicker of the man I married, vulnerable and seeking connection. I leaned in my lips, finding his in a desperate attempt to bridge the chasm between us. The kiss was intense, filled with the turmoil and longing of our fractured love. He responded, his arms wrapping around me, pulling me closer. The passion was there, a wild, desperate thing, but it was tinged with sadness, a recognition of what we were losing as quickly as it had ignited. The fire dimmed. David pulled away a pained expression on his face. I can't. Emma, I'm sorry, it's not fair to you. Tears welled up in my eyes as I stepped back, the cold reality setting in. If you can't let me in, if you can't fight for us, then what are we doing? He looked at me, his eyes filled with a sorrow that matched my own. I don't know, Emma. I really don't know. The night ended with us in separate rooms, the silence, a deafening reminder of the distance between us. I lay in bed staring at the ceiling, the pain of our crumbling marriage, a physical ache in my chest. As the hours ticked by, I realized that love alone wasn't enough. It required action, communication, and a willingness to face the darkest parts of ourselves. I loved David more than I could ever express, but I couldn't fight for us alone. The dawn brought no relief, only the stark realization that something had to change. I was at my breaking point. Standing at the crossroads of our marriage, the path forward was unclear, shrouded in pain and uncertainty. But I knew one thing for certain, I couldn't continue living in the shadow of what we once had. As the sun rose, casting a pale light through the window, I made a decision. It was time for a confrontation, a final attempt to salvage the love that was slipping through our fingers. The day ahead loomed large, a battlefield for the heart, and I steel myself for what was to come. The morning dawned with a heavy sky mirroring the turmoil in my heart. Today was the day I would confront the truth, whatever it might be. As I sat at the kitchen table, sipping my coffee, the silence of the house enveloped me like a shroud. The memories of laughter and love that once filled these rooms now seemed like echoes from another life. David walked in his face, a mask of weariness. He paused when he saw me, a flicker of something unreadable in his eyes. Morning, Emma. David, we need to talk. Seriously? I said, my voice, steady, despite the chaos raging within. He nodded, sitting across from me. I know I can't go on like this, I began, my hands trembling. I can't live in a marriage filled with secrets and silence. I miss you, the real you and I don't know how to get back to that. David looked down his fingers, tracing the grain of the wood. I miss us too, Emma, but I've realized something. I'm not the man you married anymore. I've changed, and I don't know how to go back. His words were a gut punch, the final confirmation of my worst fears. So what are you saying? I asked, a lump forming in my throat. He met my gaze, his eyes filled with pain and regret. I think it's best if we part ways. I need to find myself, and I can't do that here. Not like this. Tears blurred my vision, but I fought them back. Is this really what you want, David? To end everything we've built together? He nodded, a tear escaping down his cheek. It's the hardest decision I've ever made. But yes, I can't keep pretending. It's not fair to you. The finality of his words crashed over me like a wave. This was the end of our journey together. The closing of a chapter that had once been filled with so much love and promise. I love you, David. I always will. But I can't force you to stay. I said, my voice breaking. He reached across the table, taking my hand in his for the last time. I love you too, Emma, and I'm so sorry for the pain I've caused. We sat in silence, the weight of our goodbye hanging heavy in the air. After a moment, he stood up his shoulders slumped in defeat. I'll start packing my things. As he left the room, I sat there numb and heartbroken. The man I loved was walking out of my life and there was nothing I could do to stop it. The next few hours were a blur as David packed his belongings. Each item he took felt like another piece of my heart being torn away. When he was done, he stood at the door, his bags at his feet. Goodbye, Emma. I wish you all the happiness in the world, he said, his voice thick with emotion. Goodbye, David. Take care of yourself. 
I managed to say, my heart shattering into a million pieces. He turned and walked out the door, closing it softly behind him. I stood there alone in the silence, the finality of our parting, settling over me like a cold, unyielding fog. In that moment, I realized that sometimes love isn't enough, sometimes people grow apart, and the only way to find happiness is to let go. As I looked around the empty house, I knew it would be a long journey to heal, to find myself again. But as I watched the snow begin to fall outside, covering the world in a blanket of white, I felt a flicker of hope. This was not the end of my story, but the beginning of a new chapter. A chapter where I would rediscover myself, my passions, and eventually my capacity to love again. The snowflake mix danced in the cold air, each one a symbol of new beginnings. And with a deep breath, I stepped forward into my new life, alone but unbroken.